so she learned to, to mix the chemicals together in her bathtub. And instead of using lye, which is what they used back in the day to straighten black women's hair, she came out with a relaxer that was a no-lie relaxer. And she mixed it up in her own little bathtub. And she started to sell that door to door. She had what is called in our world today the economy of free. Well, they gave her, she gave a free sample, a free demonstration. And that free demonstration, once you've seen your hair, you know, it's like, whoa, that's all right. Yeah. They liked it. And it didn't stink, and it didn't smell, and it didn't make your hair fall out. And the word started getting around. So she decided to take out an ad in the newspaper, okay? Because the company's growing a little bit bigger, she wanted to get the message out a little bit more, so she put an ad in the newspaper. That is the ad for, you know, uh, Madam C.J. Walker's, it wasn't called the well, Wonderful Hair Grower, all right? She didn't have Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. She didn't have any of that kind of stuff. She had to come up with this. She got her friends together and family together, put them in a room, and taught them how to do the demonstrations. And so now she sent out her social team to go knocking door to door, doing demonstrations and selling the product. Sound familiar? It will. Madam C.J. Walker ended up employing more than 3,000 workers. She was the first female self-made millionaire. The first in America. The first. She did it on her own. And that business model has been copied over and over worldwide with products like Tupperware. You got that plastic shoot here? Uh -huh. You remember having them Tupperware parties? Yeah, and we have purse parties now. And in America, they sit around, they sell coach purses. You come in, you get there, here's your coach, and you see all these fancy, it's the same concept. Avon sells hundreds of millions of dollars this way. Avon doesn't even have a commercial. They got a social network. So this thought of this woman doing this back in the turn of the century, using her social network to sell product by giving something away for free. You need to stop thinking like this is some new shit I need to catch up with. It's not new. It's not new at all. The only thing that's new is the tool that makes it even easier. But the concept, the business principle is not new. By the time this woman died, she had like um, Oprah houses. I mean, you know. Look like the White House. She was, I mean, this turn of the century, a millionaire in the turn of the century is probably like, I don't know, a billionaire today. You know, it's just ridiculous. So I just want to wrap it all together, guys. I was sitting in my um, pool and I'm watching this bee. You have bees here? <laughs> really? I haven't seen anything fly in this place other than planes. It's like, where's the, where's the bugs? I'm so used to bugs. I'm in the south of Georgia, you know, it's like bug city in the, in the U.S. So anyway, I'm sitting there and I'm watching this bee. And this is it. And it's going from flower to flower. And I'm just watching it like, wow, that's pretty cool. What's the bee doing? Huh? Pollinating. It's what? Pollinating. Nope. <laughs> Anybody else? Socializing. <laughs> that's pretty good. Nope. I like that, though. But I think you have the right answer, but it's really not what the bee is doing. The bee is gathering nectar. The flower produces this nice uh, uh, sugary liquid inside that the bee has to get to make honey. So he takes that back to the hive and they do some shit and make honey. I don't know how that happens. But they get it from the flower. The flower doesn't have feet, but it likes having sex. In order to have sex, it's got to make pollen, and that pollen has to move from the male flower to the female flower. 
pollination. So the wisdom of the flower is that, hey, if I attract the bee with the sweet nectar, he will carry my seed over to the female flower. Pretty good stuff, right? So now what you have is a bee that ends up looking like this. The bee is not willingly pollinating. That's an afterthought. That's what the flower is making the bee do simply by giving it what it wants. Am I making sense to you? Are you figuring this shit out about how you're going to get your customer with social media, give them some good free sugar shit, and they'll take your message and spread it around. But the key is, look at this bee. It's not just one flower's pollen, it's all kind of people's pollen. Don't worry about them spreading other people's messages. You just give them a little bit. Don't give them a really big ass message. How is it going to get off the ground? You know, hey, let me send you with all this, all this stuff. And all he's going to do is never going to fly. But you give him one little seed, one good message, it's going to spread it. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the key to social media marketing. My name is John Lawson. I am from Colder Ice. Does it say that? Oh, no, don't do that. Yeah, there it is. I'm from Colder Ice. Google me, baby. That's all you got to do. Remember that word? Google me. I, I'll, you find me. Don't remember anything else but colder ice. And oh, I got these things. Shame and self promotions. Okay? If you like this presentation, you've gotten about 40 minutes of it. It's two DVDs, two hours of some really good shit. Thank you very much. I'm sure there's going to be lots and lots of questions. We've got lunch served outside, uh, some sandwiches and stuff, but John's going to be around all afternoon as well. But uh, should we take a few questions now? Anybody? No, no, Everyone's no, no, no. like, wow. They're full. <laughs> they're full. <laughs> I saw one in the back. I'll they're take, still I'll thinking take about the bee. <laughs> yeah, it used to be that content is king. How would you like to update that? I would to update that with, well, A, context. Okay? Context is king. Content's never been king, all right? If you ever go to the library, that would let you know right away it's not the best book that gets checked out. How many, who was, what was the number one movie in this country this year? Well, just give me one of the big movies. Pirates of the Caribbean. Say it, what is it? Pirates of the Caribbean. That's a great movie. It's shit. It's junk food. So we understand that content is really not king. Context is. Why is that garbage movie number one? Because it's a fun afternoon with the kids. See? So you've got to make sure that you are speaking to the audience in the right way, in the way that they want to be spoken to. It's hard to teach people unless you've got them in a captivative audience and make them pay money to come and sit in the theater and listen. <laughs> Yes, sir. Uh, you're you're uh, talking about appropriate information and actually pumping up content, which uh, yeah, has good effects. But today, uh, how, do you handle the, how do you handle the question and the response to all of these people? Because, I mean, in today's world, they, they require a dramatic response. Yeah, you know, I mean, the thing is, you don't want to get caught up in the demand. All right? You control the flow, not them. Even though everybody thinks we're giving up control, you control the flow. All right? I remember the gentleman asked how many times I should uh, tweet or blog or whatever. Whenever, however much you want. I went from doing this stuff every day to doing it once a week. And now my people know that I'm just going to be there once a week and they come once a week. So you, can, you control that. And the other thing is you want to be just finding, hey, what's the question everybody keeps asking? Because if one person has that question, another person has that question, then that's the most popular question you're going to get the most bang for your buck. You can't do everything. You can't be everywhere for everybody. So you have to be selective. Selective listening is what I call it. Okay, you can't listen to everything. 44,000 people. You think I listen to these people? God, 
It's just noise and chatter in your ear. You've got to be selective about who you're going to pay attention to. Anyone else? All right. I think we're good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, lunch is outside, and uh, we'll be back uh, one o'clock for the next presentation.